so okay okay so today i would like to talk about uh, kotlin and about graphql and how to build the uh, uh, application using graphql and kotlin and uh, spring boot so uh, let's start uh, I'd like to introduce uh, so myself. So I have over six years of experience uh, in software, in general with Java, but uh, the last two years, uh, more of uh, more projects we are working with uh, are using uh, Kotlin. So I have over almost two years of experience with Kotlin. I also IT Academy mentor and uh, uh, Java interviewer. And here is my LinkedIn in case I will be fired. Maybe someone will will find me here. <laughs> uh, so, okay, today we talk about uh, Kotlin. We will compare Kotlin and Java. Uh, also, we will talk about GraphQL and uh, main its benefits. Uh, also, we'll compare GraphQL and REST API. Uh, and also, we will uh, build a simple application using Kotlin, Spring Boot, and GraphQL. Uh, we will have live coding session and summary and questions so okay let's start uh, from the kotlin so kotlin was uh, developed in uh, 2011 by jetbrains uh, it's very uh, famous uh, company it uh, created a lot of uh, idea uh, ideas ideas for different uh, languages uh, kotlin is designed by to be fully inoperable with java and it runs on Java virtual machine. And from 2017, Kotlin is supported by Google uh, by Google for Android application development. And uh, uh, now Kotlin also uh, use uh, for um, uh, backend uh, uh, services uh, uh, with GraphQL and with another uh, technologies like GRCP or REST API. So um, main uh, features and advantages of Kotlin is the uh, simpler syntax. Uh, if we compare with Java, you don't have like semicolons. We uh, uh, the code is more readable. Uh, uh, also, Kotlin include the uh, uh, built-in null, null safety. Uh, all we have in Kotlin, we have two types of. Uh, 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 variables they could contain null and they couldn't contain so so we when we create and define some variable we uh, should select if this variable could contains null value or couldn't also kotlin, uh, kotlin provides uh, powerful uh, coroutines to simplify asynchronous, uh, asynchronous programming kotlin provides uh, 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 kotlin uh, the code will be more readable and easy to maintain uh, also, we could extend the functionality of existing class without uh, changing it. So we could add some new functions to uh, some classes. Uh, Kotlin also provide data classes. It's um, classes only for holding some data without any uh, functionality. These classes already uh, have some common methods like uh, equals, hash code, to string, copy. And also these uh, classes uh, couldn't be modif uh, we couldn't modify them. Also, we have a uh, smart type casting in Kotlin. Uh, so uh, Kotlin uh, could uh, cast variables uh, uh, to required class after some small check. And uh, yeah, uh, also Kotlin uh, is uh, su support uh, functional programming. So it support uh, lambda expression, high order function, it support uh, different uh, collection methods. And of course, uh, Kotlin uh, run on Java virtual machine and it is fully inter in, uh, oh, sorry, interoper uh, interoperable with Java, sorry. Uh, so what does it mean? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, all, uh, we could use all Java libraries in our Kotlin applications. Also, we could use uh, Kotlin classes, Kotlin libraries in Java application. We even could have the same uh, mix of Java classes and Kotlin classes in the same uh, project and uh, uh, it will work fine without any, any issues. Okay, let's compare Kotlin and Java. <laughs> uh, 
okay, life is good, but with Scotland is better. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we have uh, uh, less, uh, we need to add less code to uh, uh, Kotlin to have the same functionality we have in Java. We, so sometimes it's easy to, to add something, but uh, Kotlin runs in Java virtual machine, machine. So very often we could see that Kotlin in Java is the same. So, but let's let's check. So if we compare Kotlin and Java, for example, we compare syntax, uh, Java has more verbose syntax. We need to uh, add uh, more uh, code to have the same functionality. But with Kotlin, we have uh, uh, shorter syntax. Uh, it reduce boilerplate code. So it's easy to read code in, in Kotlin. Uh, null safety, as I mentioned before, Kotlin has built in null safety feature. It introduced two types of variables, nullable and non-nullable. Uh, so it uh, uh, the chance to have null pointer exception is less. In Java, we don't have this uh, functionality. So every, every variable could contain null values. So developers should pay attention on it and uh, uh, check uh, it before work with variables to me to prevent this null pointer exception in, in the code. Uh, so interoperability, as I mentioned before, Kotlin is fully inter in, interoperable with Java. We could run the same, uh, uh, we could use the same uh, classes, variables, uh, uh, and libraries in Kotlin and in Java. And about functional programming, Kotlin provides more uh, uh, strong support of functional programming uh, than in in Java, Java of course also uh, has some uh, of it. It has functional interfaces, lambda functions. Uh, it was uh, added in Java 8, but the Kotlin uh, provide more functionality for it. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, go on. Uh, let's talk about GraphQL. GraphQL is open source query language. Uh, it was developed by Facebook and designed it to uh, uh, be efficient and flexible uh, for data fetching and data manipulation. The client could send and uh, request and get the, only the data uh, a client needs. So in this case, we don't have extra data and we just uh, have uh, in response uh, objects we want to have and we want to work with. So uh, the main concept of GraphQL is like schema. Is like a predefined uh, contract between uh, client and server where we describe all types, all uh, fields we have in uh, the response. Uh, query it uh, uh, request from the client to the server where we add the required field for that specific request. We could uh, add the uh, uh, some uh, input variables or uh, and describe uh, uh, fields we want to get. Uh, also, we have mutation. Mutation is some specific type of query to modify data. A query we use to retrieve data from the server. Mutation we use to modify data on the server. Uh, resolver. Resolver is like backend function to um, uh, re uh, to return data for some specific a query or type parameter. Uh, uh, okay, type, it's, uh, uh, we have two types of uh, types <laughs> uh, uh, in GraphQL. It's like object types when we could uh, uh, create uh, our types and add some new fields to it. And it's like a simple type like string, boolean or uh, number uh, or integer. Uh, so, uh, Arguments, it's input parameters of the query uh, we want to send in our request. Uh, okay, if we talk about fragments, it, uh, sometimes uh, this query could be very big and complex and some part of query could uh, uh, be copied in different part of uh, this query. So in this case, we could move some, uh, uh, some part of the query to uh, fragments and use these fragments, like import them to uh, query and use them. And also one more uh, type of communication between server and uh, client is subscription. Uh, it's, uh, in this uh, case, we just connect to the server and subscribe to some uh, uh, 
uh, event and we have like real time communication between GraphQL and uh, between server and client. Okay, if we compare uh, GraphQL uh, and REST API, uh, uh, if we talk about GraphQL, we just uh, send this uh, query and uh, ask for some fields and uh, all uh, logic to build the response for that uh, request uh, are uh, on backend on GraphQL server. If we have REST API, we should call different services and uh, get data from different services. After that, we a client should uh, combine this data and cre uh, create functionality based on that response. Uh, okay, uh, so let's compare more. Uh, uh, let's compare REST API and GraphQL. So. Mm, uh, if you talk about data fetching, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, using REST API clients should interact with multiply endpoints. And uh, if we talk about GraphQL clients, can specify exactly what data they need. And uh, uh, it does single request and uh, have all data in one res uh, response. Uh, uh, we don't have a, a uh, control over the data we get from the server if we uh, use REST API. So if you are uh, use uh, REST API, often we have the same predefined response structure with uh, all uh, included data in the response. Uh, client, uh, if, even if client doesn't need some uh, data, uh, this data will return in response. So we have uh, uh, more data than we need. Or sometimes we could uh, couldn't have all data in one response. We should uh, uh, call another service uh, to have to have it. So we could have a different situation. Uh, if we talk about GraphQL, we uh, specify all response structure in our request, and re uh, a backend service is responsible to uh, build this response and return the same structure, the same response as we have in our request. Uh, uh, with, uh, uh, if we want to add some changes to our endpoint, uh, very often with REST API we have uh, versions. So, for example, we have v1, v2, v3. Uh, so, in this case, uh, clients should uh, uh, be aware of these changes. So, should add some logic to call different version if we some added some changes. Uh, uh, GraphQL provides strong backward compatibility. So if a client use a query with all parameters uh, and we added something new to it, uh, it will continue to have the same response without any uh, errors. So with GraphQL, it's easier to maintain this uh, uh, problem when we have different versions of uh, uh, endpoints. As I mentioned before, with REST API, we could have overfetching and underfetching, so we could uh, send uh, unnecessary traffic uh, in the response. So if you talk about network efficiency, uh, GraphQL provides uh, better network, network efficiency, and low, payload size will be uh, minimum for the data a client asks. And about caching, REST API can be, uh, can, uh, 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 Provide provide a mechanism for HTTP caching. It could uh, uh, provide uh, caching based on the URL, based on header. Uh, GraphQL uh, uh, typically not uh, have like uh, caching by default because uh, every query could contains a lot of new fields and it's uh, difficult to uh, cache data based on a request. But it also could be configured. But by default, we don't have this this caching. Uh, okay, uh, now I'd like to uh, show how to create simple uh, Spring Boot application using uh, uh, Kotlin and GraphQL. So uh, here is steps we uh, should uh, do to have uh, to start simple Spring Boot application. So first of all, we need to initialize our application using Spring, uh, Spring Initializer. After that, we should add configuration to uh, specify GraphQL pass and enable GraphQL uh, UI. After that, we should add uh, uh, 
our query mutation and types to schemas GraphQLs. Add resolver for the query we added. And after that, we could run application and check if, if everything works fine on localhost. So let me switch to, oops, okay. So first of all, we could start uh, uh, Spring Boot application using Spring Initializer. Uh, Spring Initializer. Uh, so we will uh, use Kotlin and Gradle. Also, we will use Java 17. Uh, also, we have to add the dependency for Spring Web and Spring GraphQL. Okay, GraphQL. Okay, after that we could generate uh, generate application, and we will have a zip file with uh, all required class. So I already unzipped it. So here is structure we have. We have source, we have main and test. Also we have our application class, and we have resources, but everything is empty <laughs> so uh, uh, so let's start first of all we uh, we have to um, we have to add the configuration for uh, graphql pass uh, to our application and properties okay in general it's graphql also, we have to enable GraphQL. It's like a UI visualizer for GraphQL. It's similar uh, like uh, Swagger for REST API. To enable it, we should add uh, Spring GraphQL, GraphQL enable true. Okay. After that, we should add uh, uh, we should add new files here. Schema GraphQLs. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, here we should add all our queries or our types or mutations. Uh, so uh, let's create some simple application to, uh, for example, for a li library, we will add some books, we will add and point to get books from the server and to add some books uh, to, to, to our data source. So let's create type book okay. okay here we should add field we will have in these types so let's add id and it will be uuid if we add it to schema change it should be id like uppercase id also for example we add title and it will be string and this field is required so we uh, should add uh, 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 it and also the description and it's filled filled with optional so we just add string here also we should add uh, our query to get these books for example from the server uh, Okay, it will it will return. Oh, sorry, it will return a list of books. Okay, so now we should add resolvers to resolve this query. Get all books. Let's add new package here, and let's create this resolver book resolver. Okay, uh, so. You should add annotation here to uh, controller. In this case, Spring will know that uh, this class should be uh, initialized as bin. And also, we should add the same function as we added here in schemas. Okay, it should return list of books. Oh. Ah, okay, we need to add book more before. Okay, let's create model and book. Okay, 
uh, this class will hold only some data, so it could be data class. And we added here that it should contain ID, title, and description. ID, UUID, ta oh, sorry. Okay, title string is required field and description. Okay. And this field is optional. If a field is optional, could contain null value, we should add a question mark here. And we also could add like default value for it. It will be null. Now, so if we will create books without a description, we could add only the first and second parameter, and the third one will be use default value. Okay, uh, let's import it. Mm. Okay. Okay, and then let's return some mocked value. Okay, oh, no, it's not ID title. Okay, and let's ID random UID. Oh, okay, comma. Okay, now we can try it. Okay, uh -huh. okay, one more thing I want to. Pay attention uh, to map this uh, schema to the resolver. We should add annotation uh, here, like query mapping. Spring uh, will know that this method should be mapped to this resolver. Okay, let's try it. Gradle. Okay, good run. Okay, now we could navigate to localhost. Okay, so it's GraphQL. It's, we, we could run a query here and we could uh, also have some documentation here. Uh, if we op open docs here, we could have uh, uh, documentation for our, or our, all our types. We have books here, we added it in our schema. Uh, we also have uh, other types, like uh, basic, simple types, Boolean, ID, and string. Also, we have query here. If we open it, we have all query we have. For now, we have only get books query, and it returned books. Now we could try to get data from the server. Here we could add our query. We could use query. And after that, we could uh, specify which query we want to retrieve, which data, get all. Okay, and after that, we should uh, add the fields we want to get. This book have ID, title, and description. So if we need for our purpose only ID, we could add ID. And after that, we have only ID in, in, in the response, so we don't have title, description, and other fields. If we need another fields, we could add title and have them. Okay, okay, let's add one more, more query here with input parameter. For example, get by ID, we added one more query. Get by ID. We will have input parameter here. ID and it will return book, but the value could be no null because we could provide ID uh, wrong, some wrong ID. We don't have book with that ID in our system, so uh, this uh, response could be null. Okay, I think we could create service for book too easy. 
communicate with service. Book service, okay. Uh, let's notate it as service. And now we should add dependency to our controller. We could create private variable book service. Oh, okay, book service. No, no, no. Uh, book service, where is it? Okay, here. Uh, and we will move this part to the service. Okay. Okay, let's create some static variables here. Uh, let's do it mutable list because we will add some uh, books to the to this list and if we create li only uh, just list uh, we will uh, couldn't modify it so and add this book here return books oh. Okay, yeah, I think that's all. I oh, know. Should remove it. Okay, we added here uh, one more resolver, uh, one more query. We should add resolver for it. We also use query mapping. We will have input variable ID of type UID. It will return book, but it also could be nullable. So we add question mark here. And uh, also we could uh, should add arguments annotation here to map this input parameter ID to the, oh, sorry, to the, this ID we have in our class, in our method argument. Okay, and we will return get by ID ID. Okay. Okay, and we will just filter this value. and return first value or no. Okay, we could even simplify it. So let's try it. Let's try it. We need to run our application. Oh, uh, I forgot return something. Yeah. Okay, let's refresh it. Now we could see here in query, both our queries, we can get by ID, we have input parameter here, and we could see return type here. Let's get all books and just grab UUID from that response. And try the second query. And we also should specify field we want to have in our response. ID, title, and description. Okay, we have 
response based on this UID. If we change something, we will have no response. Okay, and one more uh, thing I want to show is like how to add data to our service. So we need to use another type of communication between client and server. We should use mutation. We should specify one more type here. Mutation. Okay, and we should add the query here, for example, create. And also we should specify input parameter. So ID should, will be generated on backend sites. So we couldn't know ID before we create something. So we should add a title here, like required parameter. And we also should add the uh, description like optional parameter. Uh, and we also should specify return type of that query. Let's, it return book we created. Okay, now we should add one more resolver. We also should add arguments to, to the variables we will use. It's uh, title. No, it should be string and description. Oops, sorry. Okay, and it could be nullable. Okay, and it will return book. Okay, we will add one more create method to our service. Description. Okay, so here we will just create new inst new new books, add it to our books, and return it. Okay, also we have to add mapping here, but uh, we it will be mutation. So we should add uh, not query mapping, we should add mutation mapping. Uh, okay. Mutation mapping. Okay, it should work, let's try it. Okay. Let's create and find more tab. We should use not query, we should use mutation here. Okay, let's check documentation before. Okay, let's refresh it. Okay, we could see our query and our mutations here. If we click here, we could have all mutations. We have create mutation here. It should have input parameter title and description and it, it will return book. Create. We should add title. Okay, and we should specify a response. For example, ID and title. Okay, we could see. Let's check if it, if we added it to our all books, we could see new title here. Let's add one more with description. Okay, we couldn't see description here because we didn't add it to the to our query. Okay, let's check it here. 
that's a description. No, we could see all fields, we, uh, all books we added. We could see description where we don't have description here because we didn't edit it. So, yeah. Yeah, I think in general, that's all I wanted to show. Let's summarize it. To create Spring Boot application with Kotlin and GraphQL, we need to create our application using Spring Initializer. After that, we should add a configuration to properties, application properties. We should add our schemas, queries, and types to schema GraphQL. We should add resolvers for every uh, types uh, of for every query and mutations we added. We should add query mapping to map a query to the function, to resolvers. And also we, we should add mutation mapping to map mutations to the resolver. And uh, after that, we should navigate to localhost GraphQL. We could have all documentation here and we could run our queries. So in general, in general, that's, that's all. So let's summarize. So Kotlin is modern progressive uh, language. So it has a lot of advantage of ja over Java. As like uh, shorter syntax, null safety, function interface, functional programming, coroutines. Uh, it also is fully interop interoperable with Java. Uh, we could use uh, Java libraries and Java codes in our applications. Uh, GraphQL provides uh, uh, a lot of uh, advantage. Uh, uh, if we compare it with RESTful API, so we could specify our queries and get only the data we need. And uh, uh, using Kotlin, GraphQL, and Spring Boot, we could create a very, uh, 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 very good applications. It could uh, have uh, uh, good performance and uh, easy to maintain. Uh, so let's try, try and have fun with it. So uh, also I will uh, share this presentation and if here we, I will provide some uh, links where we can start from. So different uh, tutorials, different uh, documentations about GraphQL, about Kotlin, about Spring Boot and uh, yeah, in general, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Question, if you have some. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Roman. Maybe someone has questions, please. Uh, yeah, we have uh, raised hand. Yuri. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I have a question uh, about security. Uh, so uh, does the Spring security look the same for GraphQL application as it looks for a regular REST API? Uh, it is out of scope of the presentation, but yes, Spring Security also works fine with the REST API, with uh, GraphQL, and also with other uh, type of uh, communication between client and server, like uh, GRCP. So yeah, it works fine. Thank you. And one more question. Yeah. Uh, I know that uh, GraphQL is uh, technology developed by Facebook, and yeah. I know that at one point of time they uh, wanted uh to make it closed and kind of take money for this subscribe for using uh, graphql yeah. so at this point of time is it fully open source or is it still in an intermediate position where you know facebook uh, at some point of, in the future can decide to uh you know make this a proprietary technology uh I've heard about that. Uh, uh, I read about that some time ago, but after that, I couldn't see any other uh, news about uh, it. So maybe it was like just uh, uh, to check how how uh, developers will of our companies will uh, uh, work with it, and maybe just to check if you, if they could make uh, do it uh, like. Uh, 
for money and uh, for now uh, it's fully open source uh, yeah yeah thank you other questions <laughs> 